still love yeah thank you so still on the line it doesn't even matter if you do it before x yeah but see if you can start from the diagonal now placing him just a few footprints of to the left side of the diagonal and then finding out if you can have him even more collected before the pirouette and if that results in him quitting a little bit more on you after the second stride in the pirouette push him out of it yeah so it's completely up to you where and when you finish the pirouette the goal is a half pirouette yeah but it's much more important that he stays with you straight straight no good go out of it i like his en the engagement but i'd love to see jackie that on the straight line before you bring the haunches in that he's really collected and straight yeah and i know it's a bit safer if we push the haunches in before the pirouette good line that's a perfect line so collect collect good so and now yes exactly then the hind leg good and now stay a moment in it stay a moment in it make it bigger now we need to school briefly the travers idea a little bit yeah good good so good yeah bigger a little bit bigger again good very good behind good try the moment just from the inner leg the haunches are plenty in just the energy yeah good and now bring the haunches in again but very little yes yes good 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 okay and out of it good job a little bit of a lengthening good and once more the pirouette to the right on the diagonal yeah so in the pirouette itself yes for sure a clear travers idea be careful that we don't ask for that too much before on the straight line yeah and if you need to you can stay in it until you have the haunches good 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 low neck low neck good okay good uh, good correct that yeah good one more and it doesn't have to be a diagonal that you start from k you can start later if you like good keep an eye on the neck in between you know yes exactly for the pirouette clearly deeper rounder no doubt good so and deep and deep take your time hands a little bit lower wider yes yes good good okay good good keep the left leg where it needs to be don't take it too far back try it keep the counter canter a moment good that's plenty far back yeah good easy with the left leg good that's it and then a change easy eight perfect good and give him again a little walk break good don't over eight before the walk see what you have with a little bit less leg pressure good job okay good yeah that'll come but you you understand the difference if you if you really doesn't get the idea with the haunches in of course you can school it sometimes a little bit travers before and then you turn right. yeah but it is better that you can show the judges before the period he's 100% straight yeah and then keeping in mind that it is a very relatively difficult movement for the horses you know so that we do like we did here we do three four of them and then we don't stay in it too, for too long oh it was a quick break after that it's quite a bit of weight if they do it right it's quite a bit of weight that they carry on one hind leg you know very good walk good okay same thing to the left yeah right you know even this should be extremely simple that you can pick up the rein takes a little bit forward energy but certainly not too much leg to pick up the rein yeah simplifying 
Good. That's it. And keep sitting like this, Jackie. You're sitting a little taller. Yeah, it's great. See if you can keep this up when you do, when you take a break, you know, that you sit just as tall. It looks good. Good. And briefly, this round is okay. Before the period, it's okay. Just keep in mind that this would be too low for the show arena. That's a good line. Yes, very good. And test the collection. Good. If it doesn't feel safe, do it later. Too, little too much travers. Could you tell? I'll, I, I always appreciate when a horse brings the haunches in. That's great. But if it's more than just the center of the period, then it gets a little bit in the way of the energy. Yeah? So good. Good, good, good. There we are. Good work, good work. Good job. Okay. That's good. Now easy with your right leg for the left counter canter. Yeah. Yes. Good job. There I can barely see the right leg back. Yeah? Good. Do a change and then love to see one more pirouette to the right. Yeah, good job. Collect him after. Good. Close the leg and think you want to push weight into the heel. Yeah? To me, that, that is always ideal when I can sit deeper, legs on, yes. Yeah? But it doesn't take a major driving drop to keep, keep them collected. Really small, small, small. Good, good, good. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. Good. And think where your left leg needs to be for the counter canter. Good. Good job. Yes. Good. Well done. Good, Jackie. And try the half passes from the pre St. George with the change at X and the change at M. And take your time for each change that he's really straight, okay? Nicely, very nicely done. Good. Good. Plenty of haunches. Good, take your time. Well done, good. Shoulders, good, okay. Straight ahead, the change. That's okay, that's okay. It's a tricky change. Yeah, back to the walk, try that one again. So canter right, but again, not making a big deal. We're just riding at the same spot, a little bit before the corner. Same exact light aid. If he doesn't listen to that light aid, then give a bigger aid, yeah? Easy with the left leg, so it's good. Yes, and now. Good job, good. And collect him after. He has a, slightly the tendency to rush a little bit after the change. Yeah? And that is okay for the single changes, but for the tempi changes, it might get in the way. Yeah? Good, good. Try three, four tempis on the diagonal, and then we'll give him a break again. Same exact eight. If he make, makes a mistake, we'll take care of it. Easy eights. Good. This one to the left was laid behind, but I still think that, maybe walk a second, Jackie. Do you feel that he, do you have the impression that in between the changes he gets a little bit behind you, or what do you feel there? I think it's more about the balance. Okay. Because the, I think the reason why that change to the left was laid behind, that he simply got going too much. Okay. Yeah? I love a horse that moves forward. I love the energy but maintaining the collection. Yeah? So when you feel, next time we approach the changes and after, first, after the first one, he gets going a little too much, rather wait another stride. Yeah? And I always feel that we want to get the changes so secure and so clean and so reliable that when you ride later on forward that they're still safe. Yeah? I do it at home too. I always try, you know, first a very forward line in the changes. And if there's a mistake, I'll take it back and then make it a little smaller, get it safe, and then I might risk it again. Yeah? So therefore, I find that counterproductive if the trainer says more forward in the flying changes. Yeah? That doesn't, if the horse is comfortable with that tempo, it's a different story. Yeah? But anytime you increase, the tempo and the changes to get bigger changes. It's, it's tricky. Yeah?
And let's not forget, it's a complete shift of balance from the left two legs to the right two legs. Yeah, that's why I've had many horses that learned Piaf Passage better before they learn two tempis and one tempis. Yeah? It's challenging. It takes a ton of patience there. Like I said before, it's, to me, it's the one place I don't really correct a whole lot. Yeah? Unless I give a, like we're doing here, I give a light aid and there's sometimes no reaction. That's a different story. Yeah? But I find it in general that a colder horse is a little bit easier with the flying changes. A hotter one always has the tendency to run a little bit and flee. Yeah? So, you know, and people bring horses to me and they say, he doesn't do the one tempies. And then I simply analyze the simplicity in the twos. And if that's still too complicated, there's no way I can get the ones. Yeah? So, and then also look in the two tempies for relatively simple aid that I can come with the same aid into the one tempies and then there's a very good chance that this will happen. Yeah? But always love to have the, the two so secure. And I might switch back sometimes to three tempies before I do the ones. Yeah? Never had a horse that does the one tempies and then doesn't anticipate in the twos. It's so logical. Yeah? You know, and then again, we, we analyze how they do the changes. You know, I never forget, especially the one tempies, that they're first of all willing to do that. Yeah? I mean, if you, we don't really think so much how complicated that can be, you know? Yeah, totally. And how much do we actually think about when we get going in the beginning? Have you ever thought about your steering aid for a 20 meter circle? Yeah, not really. It just, it just seems to happen as if we don't even think about it. But even that right there might be already something pretty special when you look at a, you know, at a three-year-old horse that learns the steering aid without necessarily being 100% supple and true and whatever. But they learn the steering aid actually fairly quick. Yeah? So I never forget the fact that they do it. I always appreciate that. Okay, so when you're ready, you don't have to do the changes on the diagonal. You can do them somewhere else and just see if you can come back to the same degree of collection after each change. Yeah? So our goal should be the four tempies, but if he's too much ahead of you after the first change, we collect him again. Yeah? And if you feel there's at one point a little too much energy, yeah, I love that. So I always like the long sides to open up the canter a little bit more towards a working canter, you know, on the short side a little bit collected canter. Yeah, yeah, good. That's it. Okay, you decide if he's ready for the changes, but control the tempo. Nice. Good job. Good. That's okay, you got a little bit ahead of the eight there. There he wasn't late, in front, uh, late behind, he was early in front. Yeah? When you changed, the, when you moved your leg a little bit, he switched in front. Good, wait. Good job, good job, exactly. That one's still short to the left. But it's not late, once more. So let's focus just on that one. The moment back to the walk. Good. And just that change to the left, yeah? So we pick up the right lead and we go a bunch of times. Walk, canter right, change left. Walk, canter right, change left. Perfect, very good, praise him, praise him. And walk through the short side, canter right, and then again. I'm, I'm sorry, walk and then canter through the short side and then a flying change again. Good, good, and walk once more. Let's see a bit more of a straighter line. He, he's not swinging the haunches a little bit, but you can tell he, mo he moves a little bit away from the line. Yeah? Good, good, okay, good. And canter right, circle there, and then do the four tempies again. If he makes a mistake, we'll take care of it. Yeah? Try not to prevent a mistake, Jackie, it's okay. Yeah? Not over-aiding him, because... He needs to understand that he 
just needs to do a flying change without getting quicker or running. Good. Keep going. Good job. Two more. Good. This is the tempo. And let him canter along. Super. Really good. Yeah? So trust yourself and trust him a little bit there. Yeah? And there, there's absolutely no doubt there probably was a time where you had to help him a little bit more in the change. Yeah? And then we, like I said yesterday, we ride sometimes the horse that we had six months ago. But... Ride, ride the horse that you have today. Yeah? And keep explore, exploring a little bit if this aid that you just gave there is enough. That's a beautiful canter there. Good job. Good, Jackie. Down center line, collecting over X, and then let him go a touch forward and do the halt later on before A. But don't do the halt at X. Just test a little bit. So it's good. Good, good, good. So it's right. Good, and the halt. That's okay, that's okay. That's why we're doing it, yeah? Absolutely no problem. You, if you don't test this, you don't know, yeah? It's all good, that is just, a, it's such a common mistake, yeah? Not on your part, but they simply don't quite understand how long they have to hold that degree of collection to do a smooth halt transition. Good. Good, 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 good. There we go. Better. Yes. Okay. Left hind leg. Whoops. He stepped back. That's it. Praise him. Good. Make the, yeah, that's fine. He can walk now. Yeah, but I'd love to see eventually that we, when we do a halt, that we trot out of it and then he can stretch. Yeah, like the first step is being a, a trot step. That also is going to help him eventually understand that he has to stand a little bit more closed up. Yeah? He comes in, and then he opens his frame a little bit. Yeah? And think about it. It's perfectly fine if you practice at the end of each canter section in your training that you practice a canter hall transition. Yeah? Or, or it's the trot for the intermediate one. Yeah? But for them to walk really from canter walk, that actually disappears in second level. Yeah? So to me, that hall transition there, very beneficial to test. And it is, even internationally, it's pretty rare that somebody gets a nine for the center line. Yeah? Right. Because there's usually something in the hall that they're not perfectly square or they, they're. they're even though they're square, they stand a little bit wide behind, yeah? which is hard to judge, of course, from the side, but from the front, you can see it. And then really staying on the center line, it, I find that quite challenging. Yeah? The, for, it works much better when you, it explains a lot, you know, in the Grand Prix, when you did a really good PF here, and then you have your horse still totally with you towards the end, and in the passage, they're so with you. Yeah, there's so much awareness, and then that halt over there can, can be a nine at the end. Yeah? But at the beginning, the, to get the first center line a nine, that's twice as hard. Yeah? yeah, and then, you know, do it like we did, that you do a few halts, and then the next center line, you just collect them over X. Yeah? So again, you just test there if that's available over and over again. And they, they, even if they break three or four times, by the fifth time, most horses will learn. When they're willing, they learn. Yeah? So, okay. Good. Do you want to give the three tempies a try? Or should you, you think you should? Because the fours were really good. Yeah? Great. And just in case he loses his confidence there, we can still go back to the four tempies. Yeah? Same idea. If you approach the diagonal and you still feel you need to micromanage the canter a little bit, we rather do the tempi changes later. Huh? Good. Think briefly about your upper body and where, you're, where you want your leg position so that the legs are truly underneath you. Yeah? That you feel 
only because of a very good reason you take your legs back, otherwise you leave the legs where they are. Good. Good. Keep this tempo, not more forward. Good. Yeah, good thinking. Good decision. Easy with the left leg. Good job. You know, and maintaining the line. Easy with your seat. Good. Good. There you go. And let him stretch again in canter. Make a big fuss of him. Yeah, that's great. Good. There you go. Good. And then the trot transition. Let him stretch a few. Let, let him stretch one circle in trot. Yeah, so the, the stretching with him, just as important in between your movements, Jackie, then just as important as the beginning. Yeah? Good. Good. Okay. Very good. And from there to the walk, huh? Good. Good. Keep a nice active walk with a really quiet leg. Good. Super, jo super job in the walk. That's great. Yeah, it's not only that he really reaches from the hind leg and has a huge overstride, but the frame is very correct. That's what we want to see. Yeah? So that the Neck is parallel to the ground, and the, the pole is controlled. Yeah, that's what we like to see. Very good. Good. Okay, and then for a bit more trot work, the goal needs to be that we try to get him to swing a little bit. Yeah? I'm not sure if we have an additional whip here. I can help you a little bit from the ground, and let's see what we can get. Or I can just use your whip. I can do that too. Of course, better when he understands it, when you, when you ride him and you give him the aid. It's much better than me helping him. Yeah? But sometimes it helps the understanding a little bit. Yeah, that's good. Good. And I find it on the diagonal quite interesting, Jackie. Yeah? On the diagonals, they're so used to moving forward and they naturally think a little bit more about energy. Yeah? That's when I ride the trot a little bit less forward and find out if I can transfer that energy into lifting. Yeah? That they trot with a bit more cadence than a swinging back. Yeah? Good. Reduce the tempo and see if you can add from there a little bit more cadence. Yes. That, yeah, from this tempo. Good. And then try it from a lengthening. Ride a few steps forward. A little more. Good. And now. Cluck a little bit, a little tap on top. There you go. Good, good. That's it. Okay. Good. Walk him a second. Let me um, see what we can do with him. He's pretty good about somebody next to him. Okay, buddy. Hi. Okay. Grab that. And now first what I do, I tickle him a little bit underneath his belly, see if that might cause him already to swing a bit more. Yeah? Some horses are good with that without really touching the legs. Yeah. Yeah? So here also, the most simplified aid first. Good. Just let him walk through the short side. Okay, in that same tempo, yeah? Not necessarily a, a, a big trot. Oh, it's okay, buddy. It's okay. It's okay. 
hopes that he gets used to me for a moment. Good boy, good. Oh, it's okay, buddy. Good. Good. And the second you feel a bit more cadence, then we take a break again. Yeah? Good. Good. I touch him a little bit in front. Good boy. Good. Okay, and walk him. Good. Don't want to overwhelm him there. Yeah. Good. You can take the whip again. It's okay, buddy. See, it's all right. Good. You know, and play a little bit with, with different trots. Yeah. See what works for him better. Some learn it out of a really short collected trot. Some learn it from a lengthening. Some learn it from a transition from the PF forward. Yeah. Yeah. So bring him a few times from the collected trot to the PF and testing. Think what you want to do with your legs, okay? Rather two, three steps, really honestly with the legs near her side instead of five steps where you push a lot in the rhythm of the PF. I like that. Good. Now help him a little bit on top of the croup. On top, on top. Good. And once more. Really let the hind legs bounce a little bit. Yeah, get the reaction. So oh, good. Okay. Oops. Avoid the walk step. Yeah. Feel or let's put it this way. If he gives you a walk step, that's when he needs a pretty big correction, relatively speaking. Good job. Yeah. So that he understands. No matter how much we shorten the steps, we're still keeping it a two beat. It can't drop into a four beat. Yeah. And Jackie, maybe on the diagonal ones, a little bit away from the track. And then so important that they learn right off the start to stay relatively straight. All of them move a little bit to one side or the other. Yeah. So really straight. That the energy from the hind legs goes straight forward into both reins. So then they learn to do it correctly. Once more, help them a little bit on top. Good, 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 good. Okay, and a half pass left. And then he needs a break again. Good. Nice the trot there on the short side. Good. Take your time. Really prepare. More neck bend, more neck bend. Yeah. Good. This is good. If he tilts a moment, then I would then there's a good reason to bend him less. Yeah? Good, Jackie. I love the half passes. Very good. And your outside leg was relatively neutral. Yeah, I didn't see a lot of pushing there. That to me is training when we can get a half pass like this and it doesn't take an excessive aid. Yeah, that's great. Good. Yes. You know, and they're easily a seven, if not even more. And you know already with more cadence that that would be even a bigger score. Yeah, but it's certainly not bad. Good. Go a few steps forward and come again to a few half steps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. Write a little lengthening and then try it from there. Yeah, Lengthen. Good, and now start a little bit with the whip on the croup. On top. Good, keep the hind legs trotting. So, so, it's okay, it's okay. Even when he canters, that doesn't bother me as much as walking. Yeah. Just one more good reaction and there's no need for him to do a whole lot more than that. Good. Okay. And now, neck a little bit lower, tap him behind. And cluck a little bit. Cluck, cluck, tap. So, good. A little bit less forward, less, less forward. Good, 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 good. Rising trot. Good enough for him. That's what we want. Just like that. Ideally, that when you try it, Jackie, that you get this reaction, what you had there. Yeah? That's great. And yes, it's tempting to allow him to go a little forward and of course he shouldn't do it in place but if he if we ask him to or if we allow him to go too forward he doesn't have to sit yeah so just a few steps two three steps a little bit more in place and then he can go already forward so that that transition with his hind leg really happens when you come to the pf yeah and it's again it's more understanding the coordination 
Yeah, and then again, a beautiful byproduct is at the end a stronger horse. Yeah, but I don't like to think the other way. I said, ah, he needs to be stronger and stronger. They, you know, a five-year-old horse, when they have talent for it, we can play with this a little bit. If, if we do it excessively, of course it's wrong. Yeah? And then we want to remember, when he, when he learns the, um, the cadence in trot, initially, Jackie, that is a ton of strength for them. Yeah? To trot a little bit bigger, holding that cadence, you know, while the hind leg is swinging underneath the belly. So at that time, I'm always pretty sensitive that they might get a little muscle sore, you know. And you will see, eventually when they learn it, then you can test already the reaction to a bit more cadence in posting trot. Yeah, it doesn't take a lot of C to get the initial idea of swinging. And, and again, when this is simplified and they understand that transition, of course, it's more logical that they hold the passage a little bit more on their own in the, in the test, yeah? And I really mean this. When I ask for the passage and without aiding a whole lot, they should do it for, for a seven, yeah? So that, that it really sinks in. That also simplifies the transition from walk to passage, yeah? Because if it takes a major effort in the passage to get that passage itself, the transition into it is going to be super difficult, yeah? yeah? So my, my point is that they do it for at least three, four, five steps on their own. Now, if I add something to it, I can possibly make it an eight. Right. Same for the PF. Yeah. When you bring him back and he does it initially for a six on his own, perfectly fine. Yeah? Yeah. But again, they, they, they will learn with that mindset when you ease up a little bit with your eight that it's possible to keep him trotting in place, mm -hmm. yeah. not taking the leg away. Yeah? Same as in the canter pirouette and in the PF. I don't believe in consciously giving a rhythmic aid. Right. It's, it's a bit more leg pressure and then testing, is this enough? Yeah. Yeah. If the answer is no, of course we give a bigger aid. Yeah? And you, you've done already a wonderful job teaching them the idea of the PF. Take it a step further and say, look, buddy, now you're going to do three to four steps on your own. And when you walk, it's a perfect training opportunity, yeah? Very good, but really good in your changes, yeah? That's, well, it was a nice improvement and the pirouettes will come too and you can really count on him collecting a bit more before you turn, okay. yeah. yeah? And then if you need, if you decide one day, nah, you know, I need to school it and I need to keep him on a triple pirouette, a little bit bigger, spiraling in, of course that's fine, yeah? But always remember that it's 10 times harder for a horse to engage on the straight line yeah. compared to the spiraling in. Yeah. yeah? Exactly. And then again, right there, it's, it's not just being stronger, but being really comfortable with that uh, transition to so much engagement, yeah? From medium canter to a pirouette canter, yeah. you know, and then I'm always so, not annoyed, but it, it doesn't make sense to me when we're just cruising around and somebody says more hind leg, more expression. Yeah, if, if it's available and the horse feels comfortable in their body to go there, then it's fine. Yeah. You know, but I ra much rather use movements such as approaching a pirouette, approaching a PF. That's where I want to get the hind leg. Yeah. It's so much more logical to the horse then. Yeah. yeah? yeah exactly. And I've seen so... I think I said this yesterday too, where a rider is so concerned about the hind leg, the pressure ends up in the bridle, the hind legs are more active, but now the mouth is a mess. Right. Yeah? yeah? I'm not saying that I don't want the hind leg, but I really want this whole picture, this, this whole effortless energy that flows through the yeah. dressage horse. Yeah? yeah? That's what it's all about. We, we all do it, yeah? <laughs> and again, nothing wrong when they learn, when he learns the one tempi, so you help, help him initially a little bit with the seed, no problem, yeah? Just be aware of it that it's later on possible to do just with the leg, right. yeah? Right. Very good, Jackie. Thank you very much. Good luck with him, very nice horse.